In this lesson, we'll learn about displacement mapping in Octane for Cinema 4D. Let's create a new standard surface shader and assign it to the cube. Now open up the live viewer and start interactive rendering. Now to see a wireframe version of our render, we can choose wire mode from this drop down menu. Now we see our cube with six quads, then Octane triangulates each quad into two triangles. We will just focus on the quads to make it simpler. Hey folks, welcome to MoGraph Plus. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Octane for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 20 hour long course in which we explore all the aspects of Octane for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out, the link is in the description. Don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified about our latest videos. You notice this is a simple low poly cube. If I want to use displacement mapping in which a texture will be used to add geometric detail to the object, we need to make sure our object has enough polygons so the input texture can use those polygons for the displacement mapping process. There are different ways to subdivide our geometries procedurally and add more polygon details to them. We can do that natively using Cinema 4D subdivision surface. So let's add one to the cube. And now we can use the subdivision viewport value to control the subdivision level that we want. You notice this also rounds the original shape. If we want to preserve the original shape, we can change the subdivision type to open subdiv by linear. For now, let's take the cube out of the subdivision surface. If we want to procedurally subdivide our geometry using Octane in render time, we can right click on the geometry, go to extensions, then see for the Octane tags and add an Octane object tag. Now, if I select the tag, we have the subdivision group tab. And here we can use this subdivision level value to add more polygons to our geometry. This controls how many times the polygons of the geometry should be subdivided. When the subdivision level is set to zero, there would be no subdivision. When I increase it to one, we have generated four quads of each original quad. Then Octane also triangulates each resulting quad. When I increase the subdivision level to two, we have quadrupled the number of polygons again go to three, we have quadrupled the number of the polygons again. So each time you increase the subdivision level by one, you have four times more polygons compared to before. And obviously Octane triangulates each quad at the end as well. Let's keep it at four for now. You notice as we keep increasing the subdivision level, the geometry becomes rounder and smoother as well. If we want to preserve the original shape of the geometry and keep the edges sharp, we can start increasing the subdivision sharpness value. Let's try one, two, three, and finally four. Now the edges are very sharp. But if I increase the subdivision level to five, now the edges become smoother and you can compensate for that by increasing the subdivision sharpness uh, to four or five again. For now, let's set the sharpness to zero and level to three. We can also change the subdivision scheme to bilinear, which would preserve the original shape of the geometry as well. For now, let's set it to Catmull Clark. We have different subdivision schemes or types. You normally want to stick to Catmull Clark. Uh, you can use the loop mode if the geometry you want to subdivide is already triangulated and has triangles instead of quads. As I mentioned, bilinear preserves the original shape. For now, let's set it to Catmull Clark. Now, if I delete the Octane object tag from the cube and add the cube to the subdivision surface again, and set the subdivision viewport value to two. Now remember that Octane only considers the subdivision viewport value and ignores the subdivision renderer value. 
Now this geometry has already two levels of subdivision. If I add an octane object tag to the subdivision surface and go to the subdivision group tab and add one subdivision level, you notice octane takes the subdivision surface subdivisions into account and adds new subdivision levels on top of it. The difference being is that subdivision surface adds the new polygons right in the viewport while octane does it when we start the render. For now, let's take the cube out and add a new octane object tag to it. I'm gonna increase the subdivision level to three and sharpness maybe to three. Now that we know how to subdivide our geometries and add more polygonal details to them, let's start talking about displacement mapping itself. Displacement mapping allows you to create real geometric details based on a texture. The difference between displacement mapping and bump mapping is that bump mapping was just an illusion. We wouldn't alter the actual geometry, but displacement mapping actually moves and alters the polygons and the faces. So let's get back to the path tracing kernel in the live viewer and open up the standard surface material that is assigned to the cube in the node editor. In the geometric properties tab of the standard surface shader, you can see we have a displacement input. Unlike bump or normal mapping, we don't connect the displacement texture that we want to use directly to the displacement input. You can't even if you try. First, we need to connect a displacement node to the displacement input of the material. So let's add a displacement node and connect it to the displacement input of the material. Now, as you can see, the displacement node has a texture input where we can load our displacement texture. Before doing that, the first parameter in the displacement node is this type, which allows to choose between texture displacement and vertex displacement. And these are different algorithms to compute displacement mapping. Texture displacement is the older one and almost no render engine implements it anymore. Vertex displacement is the newer method, which is better and easier to understand uh, compared to texture displacement in every which way. So for now, let's just use vertex displacement algorithm. Next, we need a texture to drive the displacement mapping. So add an image texture node to the texture input of the displacement node. And let's load this break underscore disp texture. And now we start to see the geometry is starting to be displaced in a mushy way. If I solo the texture that we just loaded, by selecting it and pressing D, you notice it sits a bit too small on the geometry. So let's add a transform node to it and increase its scaling to two. Now select the texture itself and because we are in ACES and this is a data input, let's change the color space to non-color data to get more accurate displacement mapping. And as this is a grayscale texture, we can change the type from normal to float. Now, the reason we don't get any details in our displacement mapping is because we don't have enough polygons for the displacement mapping to drive the displacement from the grayscale texture that we loaded. And if we go to the wire mode, we can see that better. Now, to add more subdivisions, select the octane object tag and increase the subdivision level to 4, 5, six and maybe seven is enough. Now we start to see the individual bricks from the texture. Let's get back to the path tracing kernel again. And to preserve the original shape a bit better, let's increase the subdivision sharpness to around five. Now the displacement mapping looks better for sure. Let's get back to the displacement node. Then we have displacement height, which controls the amount of displacement mapping. By default, it is set to 10 centimeters. So what is happening is that because this mid level value is set to zero by default, where the texture is black, there would be no displacement mapping. Where it is completely white, it would be 10 centimeters. And grayscale values of the texture will use something between zero to 10 centimeters, depending on how bright their pixel value is. Let's try one, two, 
three, five, seven, and ten. Next, we have this mid-level value. It defines the value of the displacement map that is considered to be zero displacement. By default, it is set to zero, so the black values of the texture are not gonna get any displacement, so zero displacement, and everything brighter will be displaced to the outward direction. When set to 0.5, now 50% gray will be zero displacement, darker values in the texture will be displaced inward, and brighter values will be displaced outward. And when set to 1, white pixels will have zero displacement and darker values will be displaced inward. Let's set it to 0.5 in this case. I'm going to just zero out the specular reflection weight to zero for now and get back to the displacement mode. Then we have this map type. We can choose between height and vector. Height map is the more traditional one when you have a grayscale image and you want to add displacement based on that grayscale texture. We also have vector map that can also displace the mesh in different directions besides only up and down and are normally exported from sculpting tools. We take a look at using a vector map later on in this lesson. And if the map type is set to vector, we can define the vector displacement map space between object and tangent. Right now, because we are using the height map, it doesn't matter. These input axes allow you to define the order of the channels when using a vector map. Next, we have this auto bump map checkbox. To understand how this works, let's select the object tag and lower the subdivision level to five which gives us a mushy result. As soon as I enable auto bump map, we get more details. Auto bump map puts the high frequencies of a displacement texture into the bump attribute so that you do not need as many subdivision iteration values. You can obviously do that manually by connecting the displacement texture to the bump input of the material. For now, let's disable it. Finally, there is this subdivision level parameter, which works exactly like the subdivision level value in the Octane object tag, but that was per object and this is per shader here. So any geometry that has this material will be subdivided if we use the subdivision level here. When it is set to zero, it is disabled. And if the geometry that has this material also has an Octane object tag, the subdivision level value from the object tag will be used. But as soon as we use a subdivision value higher than zero in the displacement node, let's try one. Now the subdivision level value in the object tag will be ignored and the subdivision value from the displacement node will be used. Let's try increasing it until we get what we want. Seven would be enough. Now be very careful when increasing the subdivision levels. Each time you increase the value by one, you are getting four times more polygons, which if they are quads, Octane will triangulate them and that would double the already quadrupled quads. And because we still have the subdivision sharpness value set to five, we get a cubical shape. If we lower it, the shape will become rounder and smoother. Let's set it back to five. I'm also gonna zero out the subdivision level in the node to zero and increase it in the tag to seven. Now let's try the vector displacement, which is a very similar process. So let's create a new standard surface shader and assign it to the cube. Select it in the material manager. So it would be loaded in the node editor. Now add a displacement node to the displacement input of the material. Add an image texture node to the texture input of the displacement node. And load this disp vector ear displacement texture. Change the color space to non color data. And because this is an RGB texture, the type has to remain at normal. Next, select the displacement node. 
change the type to vertex displacement and change the map type from height to vector. Increase the height to something like 50 centimeters and change the vector space from object to tangent as this texture was created in tangent space. And now we have these ears sticking out from the cube. Pretty cool. Now we start to see some faceting, so we can try increasing the subdivision level from 7 to 8 for a smoother result. Now when increasing the subdivision level, it might take Octane some time to calculate the new polygons, especially if you have entered a large value either intentionally or by mistake. In that case, it might take Octane a few minutes to calculate the new polygons before starting the render. Please avoid stopping or pausing the render as it might crash Octane and Cinema 4D. Just wait until Octane starts the render, then you can stop the render and lower the subdivision level. Finally, let's learn how to combine and mix displacement maps using a displacement mixer node. Let me go to the brick displacement material, select the texture, its transform node and the displacement node, press Ctrl C to copy them and paste them in the ear displacement material. Let's say we want to have both the brick and the ear displacement mapping. To do that, first we need to add a vertex displacement mixer node. And it's called a vertex displacement mixer node because it does not work with the texture displacement algorithm. So let's add one and connect it to the displacement input of the material. Connect the ear displacement node to the displacement one input of the displacement mixer node and connect the brick displacement node to the displacement two input of the displacement mixer node. And now we have both of them on the same geometry. And in the mixer node, you can go to the layers tab and use this blend weight values to adjust the contribution of each displacement. For example, I can lower the blend weight one to fade the ear displacement texture or use blend weight 2 for the brick displacement. For now set both of them to 2 and if you want to combine more than two displacements simply go to the basic tab of the displacement mixer node and increase the displacement input from the default to two more. In this lesson we learned about displacement mapping in Octane for Cinema 4D. See you in the next one. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Octane, Corona, V-Ray, Redshift and much more. See you in the next one.